Good morning. As always, it is great to be able to gather in the house of the Lord this morning to worship God as the family of faith known as First Baptist Church of Farmville. I want to welcome everyone, welcome those who might be visiting us today um, or who are back and it has it's been a little while since we've seen you. It's so good to be able to gather together as brothers and sisters and to worship the Lord. I want to say a special word of, of welcome to those who are joining us online this morning. We acknowledge your presence and are glad that you are able to gather with us in worship as well. Um, this morning, if there, are any, if there are visitors who would like to have contact from the church, do note that a portion of the bulletin does tear out, and, um, and you can uh, write your information there and put it in the offering plate following the service, and we will follow up with you this coming week. Um, additionally, if you're joining us online and want to contact the church, please go to firstbaptistfarmville.org, and you can uh, find contact information there. Uh, this morning, for giving of tithes and offerings, the offering plates are located on the sides of the stage and also in the vestibule. Um, you can also give online at firstbaptistfarmville.org, or you can drop off or mail um, checks to the church uh, during the week. Um, you'll notice in the bulletin this morning, there are several things uh, that are still in there. There are... Um, slips where you can nominate trustees and deacons. All the information is there, so please take a moment to read through those, and um, once you uh, cast those votes, you can put them, or make those nominations, you can put them into the offering plates as well, um, or you can bring them to nail in the office uh, during the week. There's also a, a page in there for our Wednesday night suppers, and so remember, um, if you if you are not going to be here on Wednesday, the office needs to know that by noon on Monday so we can um, know, you know, ha have a, a head count. Um, also, if you have not participated yet for Wednesday nights, you are welcome and encouraged. Um, it was a really, a really fun night um, this past Wednesday as we gathered together and shared a fellowship meal together at 5.30 p.m. Um, remember that the, the prices are $8 uh, for an adult. Uh, $4 for a child, I think the age is 2 to 5, under that is free, and then the, the max for a family is $30, um, but uh, you can use that sheet of paper to, uh, if you haven't signed up already, you can go ahead and sign up and put that into the offering plate, and we will um, have those numbers uh, for Wednesday evenings. Do note that uh, today is the last Sunday, and this week's the last week that we are collecting the offering for uh, Carney Hedgepeth. Information has been in the bulletin, and we've mentioned it for the past several weeks. Um, the H.D. Johnson Fund is matching up to $5,000 of that contribution to go and, and to, uh, uh, to be a gift uh, to uh, Carney Hedgepeth and his family um, during this time of his uh, recovery. Um, also remember that there is a canned food and clothes drive that's, that's ongoing right now and will continue through October. And this is uh, the youth are collecting these um, gently used um, clothing and course unused canned goods you know um, that would be kind of weird if they were gently used um, but uh, you can bring those um, and put them there's the bench that's down there and I see, see some smiles and laughs but there's a bench down th that's outside of the fellowship hall and that's where you can put all of those things um, and so if you bring them on a Sunday or on a Wednesday or during the week um, please try to get them there that helps us uh, get them all located in a central um, area um, this morning, I want to make an announcement that a couple weeks ago, the youth committee uh, made a recommendation uh, that the personnel committee approved um, and affirmed this past Monday that Beth Outland would serve as our interim part-time minister with youth. So that's something to celebrate. Um, help me if you would celebrate that. Um, since last November, our youth committee has stepped up a, a whole lot in the leadership, and especially Beth, in, in taking the charge and making sure that our youth ministry continues and has been thriving. And so it was, it was a pretty natural um, evolving of, of her duties there, and we're, we're thankful that God has called her into this position. Uh, a couple things to note, just to make sure we're, we're clear on that, it is in a part-time, uh, she's in a part-time capacity in, in this, and we are continuing to do the search uh, for the person who will be the permanent um, in that position, so I uh, do, do know those two things, but I, I'm, I'm thankful for Beth and the leadership she's given to our youth ministry over the past many months, and, um, and excited for the, 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 new, the new ways you'll be continuing to lead. Um, one more thing I need some help with this morning, uh, today is one of our staff members' birthdays, today is Jonathan Sitton's birthday, and so we can't ask him to play happy birthday to himself, so we're all going to have to sing real good, all right? <laughs> Everybody on key and loud. 
At this time, I invite you to join your hearts in prayer with me as we seek the Father together. God of life and God of love, we thank you so much for the bond that you have given us as brothers and sisters in your family. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that binds us together and, and, and leads us in the paths that we each take as individuals, but also corporately. We thank you for the ways that we find you working in our midst, uh, the way that your good news, your gospel, your saving grace continues to thrive in us and move through us into our community. Lord, we pray that um, today as we worship you, as we lay burdens before you, as we seek you, that we would find you in a very special way, that you would continue to energize us, uh, to motivate us by your great love. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. better okay <laughs> good morning good morning I was make sure I've never done this before this is high tech <laughs> okay so I'm gonna be reading from Psalms 113 praise the Lord praise the Lord you his servants praise the name of the Lord let the name of the Lord be praised both now and forevermore from the rising to the sun of the sun to the place where it sets the name of the Lord is to be praised the Lord is exalted over all nations his glory above the heavens who is like the Lord our God the one who sits enthroned on high who stoops down to look on the heavens and the earth he raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap he seats them with princes with the princes of his people, he settles the children, the childless woman in her home as a happy mother of children. Praise the Lord. At this time, I invite you to stand and sing with me hymn number 90, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. <laughs>
go into a time of prayer, I want to direct you to the bulletin and to um, our prayer list here. You see many different names and families represented, and there are many that we also carry in our hearts. And as we've been doing for the past couple of months when it comes to the morning prayer, I want to invite you uh, to take a few moments to pray. And this morning I want to call a little bit of an audible before we do that. So Jonathan, even though it's your birthday, I'm sorry. I know you don't love these things, but could you play... Um, joyful joyful we adore thee again but pull the throttle back on it okay so we don't need, we don't want to go full throttle but that's such a beautiful song amen amen full of truth full of God's love and, and his provision for us and so as we spend a few moments in praying for the people individually and for those we might carry in our hearts and minds and and if there are people you want to be added to the prayer list please see me afterwards and we'll make sure they're they're added um, let's do so though let's let's pray and let's seek the father um, joyfully, we can go to the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for the joy that is living a life with you. God, we recognize that there are bumps in the road, there are hard times, there are seasons that we go through that we wish we could jump and skip. But Lord, you allow us to go through those things to make us better to be the people that you've called us to be. Lord, as we take this moment to lift this, this prayer list before you, to lift, to lift our family of faith to you and, and those brothers and sisters who are going through times of grief and mourning, for those who are going through time of, of, of health and Ill, health issues and illness and disease, um, God, we, we do recognize that you're still with us and with them in the journey. That even though things might be really tough right now, really chaotic, painful, Lord, Lord that you're with them. That there is joy to be experienced um, and, and that there is healing to be experienced. Um, so, God, we do pray for that. We pray for healing. We pray for uh, prolonged days here on this earth with family, with friends, with church family, being able to have purpose and share the good news and the gospel and grace of our Lord Jesus. We pray for those who are um, going through, through really tough times right now that you just give peace in the midst of a time where, uh, where normal people would just say, there's no way you can experience that. There's no way you can experience peace. God, we know that we can. We know that we can uh, when we trust in you, when we submit ourselves to you, when we allow you to carry our burdens. God, again, we give you thanks for the lives that we're called to live, but uh, as people who have centered ourselves on the hope um, that you have given us, uh, we can't overlook the hope of eternity. We can't overlook that Jesus has prepared a place for us, and we are all going to dwell if we've professed faith in Jesus and trusted Jesus with our lives. Uh, we are going to experience the fullness of of relationship with you where there's no mourning, crying, pain, death. All those things have passed away and a new order and a new world has come. We thank you that you're in the midst of, of that kingdom growing right now, that we can experience, even in a fallen world, uh, what we are going to experience for forever in heaven, um, though still does not compare. So we thank you for this moment of praying, of lifting brothers and sisters to you, and we ask that you would move mightily. We ask that you would perform miracles, and it's in the name of Jesus that we pray that. Amen. This time, we want to invite you again to stand and to worship with us as we sing the worship song, You Say.
This morning, Holly is dealing uh, with the after effects of a cold that has affected her voice. And so um, I'm going to be doing uh, the reading for her. And uh, at the conclusion of this reading, the children are going to follow her out uh, for the, the kingdom kids time. So um, those of you who came for the children's message this morning, uh, you might have to follow her too and get, and get that from her then. <laughs> Our um, Old Testament reading uh, comes from Micah chapter 6 verse 8. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. This is the word of God for the people of God. 
Thanks be to God. As always, thank you, choir, for your leadership in worship this morning. If I was to ask someone who knows you well, or if you were to ask them what your character is, what do you think they would say? That's a good question, isn't it? (laughs) Character. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 says, In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Over the next several weeks, we'll be going through a sermon series called The Character of Christ and looking at several different characteristics that if we are following Jesus and setting our minds on Christ, that we'll exhibit. You see, what we believe, what we hold in our mind affects the way we behave, doesn't it? If we believe that snakes and spiders are bad when we see those things, we won't act normal, will we? If we believe we are terrible at a certain thing, the chances are we're probably going to not be good at it. However, if we have a positive outlook and we, uh, we work hard on different things, we're probably going to find success. What we put in our mind affects the way we behave. Romans chapter, two, uh, chapter 12, verse 2 says, Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So in this, in this series, I hope that we will all experience some sort of transformation. I, I've enjoyed that over these past several series that I've preached. I've enjoyed the, 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 the 
the talking, the conversations that we have had, um, that I've had with many of you about the way that God has been speaking through the sermon series. And I don't claim credit for that at all because I just speak what I feel God's speaking to me already. Amen? It's the way it's supposed to go, right? And so I'm, I'm thankful that God continues to use these. And it's not a, that's, that's not a me commending myself. It's commending you as hearers and listeners to the Holy Spirit. I heard one preacher say one, one time about a person who was coming to visit uh, their church and preaching. And one of their congregation members asked, you know, are they good? Are, are they good? And he said, I, I don't know. Are, are you a good congregation member? And I said, it works both ways, doesn't it? Um, I found that to be true um, in in myself as I place myself under ministers and pastors. There's nothing nothing special or holy or perfect about the person that God uses to speak. It all has to do with our hearing. So I want to just say that out loud for you to hear. I'm I'm glad that you all hear the word of God, and it means a lot to me. And I I hear it from you as well. We had our Wednesday night Bible study the other night, and we were asking the questions, and you all were were, were giving feedback during that that time of conversing. It's, It's fun to sit at the table not as a teacher and students, but together as teachers and students of one another as we seek the Father. That's what family is about. Amen? Okay, so that's, as I come to you this morning, as I bring this word that I hope touches you, I I, I pray that you know I've allowed it to touch and, 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 and give me the inspiration through the Holy Spirit that I need. And I'm still a work in progress on these things when we talk about being the good in the world. So, as I said, we're going to, over the next few weeks, consider the character of Christ. And uh, the inspiration for this sermon series comes from a book uh, titled The Genius of Jesus by a man who's a pastor named Erwin McManus. And so, um, I I was taught you should always give credit where credit is due. And so, when I try to quote somebody in a sermon or or, uh, I have inspiration from a certain work, I like to share that. And and I've heard from a few of you also that if that happens, you'd like to read a book. So The Genius of Jesus by Erwin McManus, again, is where a lot of the inspiration for this sermon series uh, comes from. Today we're going to look at the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 12, verses 1 through 14. But before we go there, let me ask you a question. When you share the story of Jesus, where do you begin? Where, where do you start? When you share, maybe in a... Maybe, you know, we used to call this, when we were growing up, they teach us evangelism, how to share the gospel, how to share the good news. Um, you know, we don't use those terms so much anymore. We talk about sharing the story of God, but it's the same thing, right? The story of God is good news, right? It's a story of salvation, okay? So when we're sharing the story, where do we usually start? I remember being taught to start with sin. The first story that you start with is try to, to make the hearer of, uh, of, of this story you're sharing Make sure they know how sinful they are. And the story has some beginnings there, but that's not where it begins, is it? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. You remember how the refrain went, God created, and God said it was good. He created and he said it was good. Day after day, he creates and he says it's good. And when he gets to the people, he creates and says, oh, that's all right, doesn't he? (laughs) It'll do. No. No. When he creates Adam and Eve, he says, it's very good. See, the first story that we need to share when we share the good news of Jesus Christ, I think, is to share what the original story was. Yeah, brokenness comes into the story, and brokenness has great consequences. It still has consequences in our lives today. Many of us are living lives where we're trying to overcome the brokenness that we experience. The, the brokenness that, that may be happening to us or maybe the, the very sins that, that we commit and we can't seem to get away from. And we have to, like Paul, we have to say, this thorn in the flesh, I keep having to push it aside, but it's not going away. But it just reminds me that my strength isn't in the weakness here. My, my strength comes from Jesus when I put my, my full faith in him. The story doesn't begin in brokenness. The story doesn't begin with sin. The story begins with the goodness of God and with God's relationship with Adam and Eve. The beginning of the story is good. So with that in mind, let us turn to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 12, and I'll be reading verses 1 through 14. This is interesting here. We have a couple of stories that Matthew ties together here in in his Gospel. A couple of uh, the accounts that Jesus has with Pharisees and 
I hope that this will be uh, enlightening for us as we seek this morning to consider the character of Christ in our lives and what it looks like to be good. The Bible says, At that time Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and began to pick some heads of grain and eat them. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath. He answered, Haven't you read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God, and he and his companions ate the consecrated bread, which was not lawful for them to do, but only for the priests. Or haven't you read in the law that the priests on Sabbath duty in the temple desecrate the Sabbath and yet are innocent? I tell you that something greater than the temple is here. If you had known what these words mean, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, you would have condemned the innocent. You, excuse me, you would not have condemned the innocent. For the Son of Man is Lord on the Sabbath. Going on from that place, he went into their synagogue. And a man with a shriveled hand was there. Looking for a reason to bring charges against Jesus, they asked him, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? He said to them, If any of you has a sheep and it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will you not take hold of it and lift it out? How much more valuable is a person than a sheep? Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, stretch out your hand. So he stretched it out, and it was completely restored, just as sound as the other. But the Pharisees went out and plotted how they might kill Jesus. As we consider what it's like to live the character of Christ, to live the good, I think a, a, place that, a thing that we need to acknowledge, a truth, is that the dilemma that we are most often faced with is not right versus wrong, but right versus good. Like, let me ask you, how many of you woke up this morning and you said, okay, I have some decisions to make today. I'm either going to murder someone or I'm not. Anybody? Probably not, right? How about anybody wake up this morning and they're like, okay, my neighbor just got a new car. Am I going to steal it today or go to church? Am I going to commit adultery today or am I not? Am I going to cheat on something today, or am I going to have honest values? Most of us don't just have to deal with that all the time. Most of the time, actually, we are overcome with decisions of right versus right, aren't we? Good decisions to be made. And sometimes, if you're like me, there can be so many different things on our plate and on the table Things that we should do for other people, for family members, uh, for people in the church family, things we need to do in our homes, that it can become right paralyzed in trying to, to figure out exactly where to begin. What's the good thing that I need to do here? Maybe you're a student. Do I study extra hard on this per certain thing or do I pay attention to the family member um, who it's taken me away from? There are, there are a myriad of different circumstances that every single one of us can lay out on paper and say these are the things, the decisions that we are pitting one against the other. Where do I begin? Where do I begin? You know, we see here in the gospel that the Sabbath is the main topic here. The Sabbath was a day established by God for worship, rest, and restoration. It was a gift. But for these Pharisees, it became a day of measuring right versus wrong, rules and regulations. It became a day all about religion. For them, they, they couldn't just rest in this Sabbath day being a day that was a gift from God. They had to go and make all of these rules about what exactly it looked like, what you could do and what you couldn't do, what work constituted uh, as and what rest constituted as. For them, it was all about building religion. They started taking all of these different rights and all these rights together became a great big wrong, didn't it? Religion is not God's greatest good for humans. Okay? I'm going to say that again. And, it, and for some of you, don't, don't, don't try to burn me at the stake yet, okay? Let me get there, okay? Talk to me at the end of the message, okay? Religion is not God's greatest good for humans. Religion is all about rules and regulations, about right and wrong and how to be moral. Now, I'm not saying that the decision between right and wrong is not an important thing. Um, but at some point, we graduate. At some point, our, 
our thinking goes to a higher level. Most of the time when we accept the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, if we, especially if we were not raised in the faith, we know exactly what it's like to be lost, to be broken, to live fully sinful lives, for there to be no holiness or righteousness found. You ever heard a person, maybe in an evangelistic setting, who was giving their testimony of how they were you know, on drugs and um, they you know, were sleeping on couch to couch to couch and all these terrible, really bad things were happening to them? You, you, you've probably heard, maybe you know, seen a, on YouTube or someone's come to the church before and they've shared that experience. And not every single one of us knows that experience. But at some point, we graduate. When, when we accept the gospel of Jesus, it begins with us acknowledging, yes, there is sin that, that separates us from the goodness and relationship with God. And that sin must be atoned for, and it's, and it's atoned for through Jesus and his shed his blood shed on the cross, his body broken, his very death, the death of, of, of God going, to, to going through that for us. That act of sacrifice that covers our sin and gives us freedom, forgiveness, and relationship with God. Salvation for eternity. Eventually, brothers and sisters, we have to graduate from life always being about what's right and what's wrong to pursuing good. You with me a little bit? Again, when we stay in religion, we're, all, we're just staying, fighting over what's right and what's wrong and what's the rightest and the rightly and the righteous and the right whatever. We talked about this on Wednesday night. We talked about how, um, you know, go, go online. Everybody's right, aren't they? Go on Facebook. Something happens big in the news. Everybody's right. Everybody's all over the place, all over the map, but everyone's right. Everyone's got their opinion. Everyone is right in their own eyes. There's a higher level of thinking than religion and its relationship. God had in mind for us not religion. In the beginning, God had what with Adam and Eve? He had a relationship. Remember, they used to take walks in the garden together. Sin broke that relationship but then God comes back to Abraham and Sarah. And he doesn't say, I'm going to make you into a great religion. Does he? I'm going to make you into a great nation, a people, a family. You're going to bless all the world. Not through the rules and regulations, but through the son that will be born to Mary and Joseph. The son who is God, who will grow up and offer his body, his life for the lives of everyone else. There's a, our former pastor this past week posted um, a quote that I've seen before. Rick Bailey, y'all remember Rick? He, he posted a, a quote by um, a guy named Richard Rohr that said, Religion is one of the safest places to hide from God. Think about that for a moment. Religion is one of the safest places to hide from God. Religion looks like this. Well, I go to church every Sunday, and now that Wednesdays are back, I go every Wednesday... I stay awake through all the sermons. Sometimes I go to Sunday school. I tithe. I even give above tithes and give the offerings. I do all of these things. I feed some people. That's what hiding in religion can sometimes look like. And, and, and living in relationship with God, I believe, has those same fundamental truths to it. That relationship with the body of Christ. But it's, our relationship with Jesus is not measured on those things, is it? I don't say that I'm Gina's husband because I sleep in the same bed with her every night and I give her a kiss in the morning and, and we, we talk about things and have two children together. I'm her husband because we made a covenant vow before God with one another. We seek the Lord together. We have relationship. We talk about a lot of different things together. We're there for each other in, in sickness and and in health, we have a relationship that can't be built at the end of a week on, these are all the things we happened to do together this past week. Re relationship can't, can't survive on that, can it? Relationship is deeper. Sabbath was the gift of God, again, established for worship of God, for rest, for restoration, but then it was polluted by religion. What was meant for good became about religious adherence, which was actually a way of measuring a person's level of spiritual depth. 
the Pharisees were not alive spiritually. And Jesus again and again and again tries to wake them up to that truth. Here they would rather someone starve than have a full belly, even though they're doing the Lord's work. They would rather a person go around unhealed because they believed that Jesus couldn't heal somebody on the day that was actually his day. Hmm. Their hypocrisy was very ripe, we might say. You see, the good in our lives, the good decisions that we make in our lives, they are always motivated by love. I mentioned earlier that, you know, sometimes when we talk about the right and the wrong, it's, it's black and white. But there are other times that there's a lot of shades of gray, aren't there? There's a lot of times that we don't know exactly what the right thing to do in these situations is. I can tell you something that was absolutely black and, and white. The right thing to God, the, the right thing for God to have done to us in our sin is to condemn us, to punish us, and to abandon us. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I don't know when exactly at what time we begin sinning, but I'm pretty sure it's early. Isn't it? Ever had, ever had a child spent some time around children? Let them get just a little bit hungry, and the demons start flying out, don't they? We're all broken. We're all broken people. We're all sinful, and the right thing for God to do, again, is to condemn us, to punish us, and to abandon us. But thank God he didn't do the right thing. Amen? God did the good thing. I mentioned earlier Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. That's going to be a theme throughout this series. And your relationships with one another have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Paul goes on to write, Who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage, although he had it. Equality with God. He didn't believe it that it was something that he should use to his own advantage to elevate himself above us. Rather, he made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Think about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane when he's praying to God and asking God, his Father, can you take this cup from me? He could have very easily said, God, it's the right thing to do. They're so evil. They, they can't get it. Have you seen Peter? He just can't get it. He's consistently inconsistent. Everything I tell him is just going in one ear and going out the other one. He's about to, to reject me. A little girl's going to come up and say, he was with Jesus, and Peter's going to say, no. The right thing, God, the right thing, Father, is to, to not heap this sin upon me and allow me to carry the torture that I'm about to experience. Jesus, though, he chose the good. He chose the good path by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. Verse 9 says, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that, that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You know, I hear in conversations with religious people a lot. We need, to, we need to stand up and do the right things. The right this, the right that, the right fill in the blank. Everybody wants to be on the right, on the right, on the right. If religion was writing our story, the story of God and his movement among people, among people, it would have said, and God created and it was right. God created and it was right. God created and it was right. But God said it wasn't right. He said it was good. His greatest ideal for us isn't just to, to rest and land in right, but it's to fly above into the good. And he models it by giving his very son for us. John 3.16 says that for God so loved the earth, loved the world, that he gave his one and only son that whoever should believe in him would not perish, but have eternal life. Being good, though, doesn't give us salvation, does it? You know, I've stood, I've stood in a position similar to this uh, for the celebration of the life of loved ones of people. 
And it's a hard thing for me when I stand there and I've talked to a family and they kept saying, this person was good, this person was good, this person was good, this person was good, but I don't see God anywhere on them. Some of you have been wondering, you know, talking about all this good, are you going to say, Graham, that you live a good life and you get God? I think we intuitively know that we're bad. Like, I, think, I think when we're sharing the gospel, I think evangelism is needed more now than it's ever been, sharing the story of Jesus. When we share that, we don't need to convince people that they're bad, that they're sinful, that they're broken. We need to convince people that they, are, they, they, are, they have the potential of actually being good for God. That God actually desires for his goodness to flow through them into other people. But it won't happen until we surrender ourselves to Jesus. Until we trust our lives to the only one who's capable of truly transforming us into the good. And that's Christ. That's Jesus. So this morning is we're concluding this time of worship but we're beginning this series if I was to go through you know I told you all about the inspiration for this series and the book it came from the good was somewhere near the end of that of that book but I felt it needed to be the first thing that we hear that you brothers and sisters I don't know where you're at in your journey I know some of us are further along than others and some of us are just beginning but we all need to be reminded that we are capable of great good in our lives that we need not be bogged down with trying to always discern what's right because sometimes doing the good is exactly what's right but we can pursue only doing the right and end up throwing the good away I want to encourage you this morning to consider your own lives Consider the thing that's just before you, that's right before you, the decision that's to make, and just ask God to give you wisdom to make a good decision. You might have five rights there, and you don't know which one to do, and abandoning them all ends up being bad. Choose to make the decision. Choose to make the step. Make sure it's motivated by the love of Jesus. Look at what you're good at. The things that you're naturally like, God has gift, given you a gift for this thing, a passion for this thing. It's very often that that's the very thing that God wants to use for you. Sometimes it's the very thing that you run from because when you think about how God might use that in your life, it, it scares you. I heard someone say, I think it was Christian Radio this past week, that if, if your dream, if your God-given dream doesn't scare you, then it's not the right dream. And some of you might be thinking, oh, my days of dreaming are over not i reminded you in that last series that faith series that if you have breath in your lungs you have purpose anybody breathing this morning you have purpose you have great potential but again we can't experience good and we can't be the good apart from jesus so this morning we're going to have a claim come and lead us in um in a song called here as in heaven and as we're worshiping during this song, I want, to, I want to encourage you this morning that if you feel that God is, is leading you to make any sort of decision to follow him, that you share it today. You can come forward. This, this front row is empty. You can come and sit there, and as the song wraps up, I'll come right around and start talking to you. We'll keep some tunes playing like we did earlier for that prayer, and then we'll share the decision that God is revealing to you. Maybe you're coming this morning, and you, you've decided, you know what, this is where... I want to put roots down. I want this to be my family of faith. We do so in, in, in that by, by sealing a covenant with one another. Um, we, we share in a covenant. We make promises to one another in relationship with one another. Or maybe you just want to come into this space this morning and just, just sit and just pray. Maybe you're just getting out of your seat, a sign of getting up out of your comfort zone to pursue God. And in whichever way God is leading you this morning, I want to give you encouragement to make that courageous step. So as we prepare for, for this time of worship, please stand. I'm going to pray as you're doing so. God, we thank you so much for the good that you've called us to do. Lord, we thank you that Jesus, out of great love for us, did the best thing that, 
that, that we could ever experience and receive, and that was the gift of grace that was given through the laying down of his life. Lord, we thank you for the ways your Holy Spirit is in this place pursuing us, longing to dwell in us. And if we have professed faith in Christ, your Spirit lives in us. Lord, I want to pray for my brothers and sisters this morning who might be teetering on the edge of sharing what they, they, want, to, they want to share with others as far as the decision of trusting in you for their eternity and beginning a relationship with you. I pray you'll give them courage to respond during this time. And in whatever way do we all respond to you, God, we thank you that it's all for our good and for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Father, we thank you so much that we have all experienced a miracle if we've put our faith and trust in you. Lord, that the right thing for us was not relationship, but it was separation. But God, we thank you that you have poured your love, you've lavishly given it to us through your son, Jesus, and you didn't stop there. You've gifted us your spirit to dwell in us, to guide us, to show us how to live our lives, to show us how to be the good in this world. Um, Lord, your, your son's message is gospel. It means good news. And if we are being, if we're living out this good news, we're sharing it, then we're also, we are the good news. So Lord, I pray for us as we leave this place, as we have work to do, as we have uh, so many places that we will be this coming week, that in all of the different circumstances we find ourselves, that we will, we will ask your spirit to show us how we can be your good before people, how we can share your gospel, your good news, and that you might give us the chance to share in someone beginning a relationship with you. So we give you thanks, Lord. We thank you for all the things that you have prepared for us in advance. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And may you go in peace. Amen.